I think we should just go by Denise, and okay. I'm an investigator now. Um, I, I guess we can just leave it at, at the DA's office. We don't have to necessarily say or just, You just did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, Brian, you know, start there. <laughs> um, how do you like it? How, you know, the, the, first of all, our, our first interview that we did, you... We, we surprisingly only hit on the uh, crime scene investigation mm -hmm. a little bit. We were really just more enthralled with the uh, hiking and the training mm -hmm. and everything that you were doing. But, uh, you know, the difference between the two now, you're where before you're trying to put evidence together. Now you're actually looking at cases that have already been filed. Um, not necessarily already been filed. Well, it depends. Um, so I, I work real estate fraud and also major fraud. Mm -hmm. So we deal with cases that are, um, I can't really put a price tag, but they're very, uh, like, has to be at least be within the six figures of loss before we can even take it into the D's office. Um, but for the most part, uh, we work our, our cases from the scratch up because um, we get these cases these are cases that cannot be dealt with in a city level or a patrol level because they just don't have the expertise to put these kind of cases together. So then they come to us um, where we have different investigators uh, that deal with these type of uh, fraud crimes, which is the majority is real estate fraud. Mm -hmm. So um, and you'd be surprised how much uh, real estate fraud that there is out there that people don't realize by going into the Orange County Recorder's office, you can, you can switch out a, your your name out of the deed. Like someone, some random person can come in and go in there with a the deed and say, "You no longer own this house. This person owns this house," because there's no there's no check for them really? to do that. It's like DMV. You, you're going in there and you're showing them a, a paperwork that says, "I am the owner of this house," and all they do is file it. And once it's filed, you're 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 going to be uh, having to try to fix this for years until we get it and we investigate it. And it takes a, a long time. A lot of effort. Yeah, there's a lot of effort and it's very time consuming. And to be honest with you, I'm still learning. I never dealt with real estate fraud before, just, you know, minor fraud cases, but nothing to do with real estate fraud. So I've only been there for about six months now. And, um, it was actually bittersweet because, you know, leaving Tustin police after 15 years, that was um, a big change for me because I'm leaving part of my family, you know, the people that I loved working with and jumping into something that I am just, I wasn't comfortable with. But, you know, you, in order to grow, you need to be uncomfortable for a while to get where you need to get at. Right, right. So... What what was the reasoning for you to to leave? You were there fifteen years. It was like family. I mean, you you know you were close to everybody, right? You know, you know. First of, it, of what was the deciding factor on you to make the move, and you know how hard was it once you decided you were going to do it? Um. So there were a lot of factors that I was looking into. One of the main big factors that I was looking into as to why I, I decided on leaving is my position with, um, with Tustin police was a rotational position, meaning I, my, I was an investigator, but it was only a five year, um, assignment after five years, then you have to rotate back out into the field, um, to do CSI work, the front counter, uh, take hold reports. And I didn't see my, I felt like I don't want to sound like it was beneath me, but in way it really was beneath me because mm. I've already done all of that and I needed, I, I wanted to grow. I, I, I want to do something different other than CSI. Um, so, you know, when this opportunity came up with the Orange County DA's office, which is something that I've really worked um, hard to get into once I saw the position open up, I said, okay, this is my opportunity. When am I going to get this again? It right. only comes out very so often. And so my goal is to 
eventually work in cybersecurity, and that's one of the directions that I wanted wanted to get into. So the D's office offers um, classes getting into cybersecurity because that's something that um, I mean you've seen all of these you know um, uh, issues with 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 Bitcoin and all of these fraud right. um, you know fraudsters within that uh, within that you know um, these these different um, like Bitcoin currency, it's something that's new and something that's developing and I want to be part of it. So, right. Yeah. That's just ripe for fraud. Right. The way it's set up today. Right. It's, it's, I don't know that much about it, but I think I know enough about it to not get into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's, you know, I think that it's got a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of growing pains. If that's the direction that it's really going to go. And I'm not even really sure that it's eventually going to. There are so many victims out there. We cannot get their money back and they're targeting um, a lot of elder and a lot of um, people that are just, they don't, um, they think, you know, they see an opportunity and they don't really think about how good it is, you know, it's too good to be true is is what we tell mm-hmm. these people. And um, all, you know, they send out thousands of these emails or thousands of these text messages. All they need are just a couple of people to respond to them and they're hooked. And then they make their thousands of dollars yeah. a day off, you know, off these poor victims that, you know, they're just thinking that they're investing into something that right. is not even there. Yeah. So with, with your position now, um, how do you get the cases? Do the cases come to you from the DA or, or, or does the, the city attorney for whatever city bring mm-hmm. it to you? You know, what is the, what's the protocol? Yeah, so agencies will send over cases that they are not comfortable investigating. So they send them to us, and uh, I, my supervisor will then end up um, filtering all of the cases that come through, whether they're workable or not, and he'll assign the cases to us. Um, so, yeah, I'm just learning as I'm going along. It's, you know, there's going to be a, a learning curve for, for sure for me, but they're very um, patient and understanding. They know that this is something that, um, you know, that it's just going to take some time getting used to. Yeah. Well, and everybody there is retired. <laughs> it's like I feel yeah. like I'm the youngest one. Well, I am the youngest one there. But yeah, that's what that's what I have heard that that uh, a lot of retirees mm-hmm. then go to the, the DA's office for the investigator positions. Right. And they're like, what are you doing here? You're too young to uh, be a DA yeah. investigator. I'm like, this is like the front. It's better than the age. front desk. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I do not want to deal with the front desk. It's or you know, or deal with the with with the public that comes with it. You know, having yeah. to deal with those phone calls. Well, you know what, in, in and and I know what you mean. It's kind of hard to really vocalize that, you know, and say I, I don't want to go do this again. But when you have been there, you have you have taken all the necessary steps to go upward, right? Gain experience, do new things. I mean, it's pretty hard to go from the field of crime scene investigating and see the things that you have seen, Mm -hmm. um, do it for as long as you did it. And then to come around full circle and go back to the desk, that would be, yeah. I mean, (laughs) how, how do you do that? That's why I was like, why am I, why do I have all this knowledge in investigating and being, you know, putting these cases together to go back and write a a ticket? That's just not something that I was interested in doing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sometimes I question in, in, you, you know, me, my background, my mm-hmm. family background in law enforcement, but sometimes I act, I have to question some of the mm-hmm. departments, uh, you know, reasoning for, uh, you know, the decisions that are being made. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and, and unfortunately a lot of it is the way we've always done it. You know, exactly. There's yeah. not a whole lot of of new thinking because right. you you go against the grain at that point. Exactly. It, yeah. Everybody's comfortable in the environment. Don't come in and rock balls. That's why that's you know why um, chiefs have such a difficult time mm-hmm. coming in and I mean the attrition rate for for chiefs is I, I think two or three years. I, right. I, it's not very 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 long because it is. 
so difficult on so many levels. One, it's a political position mm-hmm. where you're dealing with city, city council, mayors, you're dealing with, you know, uh, the city attorney. You've got all of these people that you're, you're having to answer to. Then you're right. dealing with the union. Right. Then you're dealing with the people. You're trying to appease everyone. Everybody. And it's, yeah. It's so hard. That's so stressful thinking about it. I think about yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I know my my son who was you know a chief for a number of years. You know he retired last mm-hmm. year. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Forty three years old, I think. Is wow. When he, when he retired, um, but prior there was history mm-hmm. because prior to that, um, he was a motor mm-hmm. and was uh, hit in the middle of an intersection. Oh, no. And had a, a double compound fracture, uh, ended up with a bunch of pins and, and screws and, and things in, in his leg. And uh, he had those after about eight years, he had those removed. Mm-hmm. But it's started giving him problems with his with his back and his hip. And so um, they gave him an early full retirement. I mean, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah at so. 43, who can say they're retired at 43? Oh my, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he, and he's doing, he's doing really well now, but you know, but he's going to be living with that, mm-hmm. know, that injury for a long time. Oh yeah. But, uh, yeah. But even at that, just watching him go through the stress and the anxiety of that position, it, it, it was hard. And, Myself in the in in the uh, private sector mm-hmm. in the positions that I have had as a manager or VP or whatever, and I've had some some fairly uh, big companies mm-hmm. that I was responsible for in the past, and nothing came close to the stress level. Yeah, that's a lot of stress, again, uh, you know, on your body too. Yeah. You know, and that's- yeah. 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 I can't even imagine. <laughs> like no. that's just, Yeah, I, I would never even touch that. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's, you know, very, very few. Right. You know, right. but, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I was, I had, uh, a, a Lieutenant on from Salt Lake city, mm-hmm. um, PD, uh, here that's been last year, I think it was. Okay. And, uh, I had him on for another reason is because he, uh, makes he has a coffee company that it's called Police Coffee. Okay. And uh, the really cool thing about it was that every uh, was it fifty percent of all of the proceeds from the coffee goes to um, families of fallen officers. Oh wow! So it's really a very very that's a good cause. Yeah, yeah. it's a very very good cause. And the coffee it's the only coffee that Joe and I will drink. I mean, it is that good. Oh, now I'm going to have to look into it. Yeah, it is. It is, you know, it is good coffee. And for everybody that's listening, that's policecoffee.com. Go look it up. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, yeah, Stefan, we, we had on and um, we had a, a lot of conversations about, you know, where the police was mm-hmm. at the time, because last time we, we interviewed and talked, it was uh, about, uh, uh it was Black Lives Matter was going, all mm-hmm. the defunding and everything was going on. And so we had a really, I mean, if, if you get a chance, listen to that particular, because, I mean, he did not hold back. Mm-hmm. I was really kind of surprised. Oh, good. You know, that yeah. he, he didn't hold back his ideas, his thoughts, the problems with departments today, um, meaning, you know, how are we going to be hiring new people because, you you know, they're having difficulty in finding, you know, candidates that want to be. Right. And then the ones that want to be having trouble finding candidates that can be. Yeah, not only that, they're changing a lot of the arrest and control. And mm-hmm. that is another huge factor that I'm noticing in these officers' mindsets now because of all the, um, you know, all the changes when right. even approaching someone or, you know, arresting someone, there's different ways on how to do it now. It's it's changing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is kind of scary. I mean. It is. When I, when I was an officer, and that's that's going 25 years ago, mm-hmm. you know, um, and obviously it was totally different. It was totally different. You want somebody out of the car, you just yeah. <laughs> got them out of the car. I mean, that was just the way that it, what it was, you know, and if they showed the least sign of resistance, you mm-hmm. you. You took them down, right? You know, and uh, it 
it, it had nothing at all to do with um, with what they're trying to blame it on, mm -hmm. and, you know, race and ethnicity and, and different things. It was just a job. Right. It was a job. And this, this person presents um, a harm and you do everything that you can to protect yourself and protect others that are around. You don't know what you're getting into. Right. And so now the scary part is, you know, here we're going off track into something totally yeah. different. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the scary part today is that you, you, if somebody's going to get hurt. and, and You, you know, need to make sure you're going home. Yeah, number one. Yeah. And people don't understand. Then what I try to say is that these these men and women that are out there wearing that uniform are just like us. Mm -hmm. You know, they're moms and dads. They're they're going to Girl Scouts. They're going, you know, they're coaching baseball. They're coaching soccer. Mm -hmm. They, you know, have birthday parties. They're doing, they, their parents, their sons, their daughters, they're all of these things that we all are. Mm -hmm. And they need to be protected. Right. They need to they need to have an environment which people don't understand and make it as safe as we can for them. I mean, we have OSHA for construction work. Right. That is telling all the owners, all the contractors, you must follow these rules to make it a safe working environment so these people go home. Perfect. I agree. A hundred percent. We need something similar to that where we're looking out for our police officers and they're going home. Right. You know, we just, I mean, we just lost, uh, was it LA County Sheriff? LA just lost County another. Sheriff's actually, yeah, two within the last two weeks, I want to say. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the uniform, it's just, there's no respect for it anymore. No. So just being, you know, in law enforcement with, you know, for the last 15 years, towards the end, I just, I noticed a great disrespect and yeah. just, I didn't even want to wear it. Yeah. I didn't yeah. want to be around. I didn't want to even walk around to go get coffee or anything because I was, it's just, it was like intimidation by the public and walking around in that uniform just made me feel like I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. This is, yeah, and that's the reason why, that's another part of the reason yeah. why. Yeah, and that's the reason why there's a lot of them that are leaving and right. retiring early. And especially the guys that can reach retirement age, mm -hmm. can leave, there's really nothing holding them back. There is mm -hmm. nothing, you know, worthy to stay any longer than they actually have to. There's a lot of them that are a year or two or three years from retirement that are going to stick it out, but hard to say what it's going to be like when, when that happens mm -hmm. and all this experience right. is and no longer there to tap into. Young kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's yeah, it's a it's a it's it's crazy, but uh, you know they'll figure it out somehow, some way. Because one thing, law enforcement is a necessary part of our society. Be yeah, is, is I mean, Chicago is a perfect example of what happens when you back down from law enforcement and back down from backing mm -hmm. law enforcement. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's uh, just craziness ensues. Yeah, I mean, scary. Oh my God, the, the the murder rate in Chicago went up. I don't know how much it was. I would be mm -hmm. guessing, but it was significant. Well, we're right behind yeah. them in L.A. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really, really true. So it's really cool that you're that you're now doing something that you're excited excited about, and you know. But that's part of it too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's no different than what you do for for your passion. Mm -hmm. You know, hiking and, you know, mountaineering and, you know, whatever, which I, I want to get more into. But, you know, that that makeup, that part of you mm -hmm. that makes you want to do those high risk <laughs> thing is the right. same thing that made you want to, you know, go into law enforcement and CSI and now working for the DA. I yeah, mean, once I get complacent with something, I just be, <clears throat> I'm just bored. I need something, you know, something different. Isn't Otherwise, that crazy? Yeah. I know, I, I know, I know exactly. You know, that's how come I have spent my whole life being good at mm -hmm. a lot of things, 
but not excellent. Yeah. You know, because it seems like I would just finally get to that point to where I, I have mastered it. Mm-hmm. And I get bored. And right. Go do something else. Yeah. It's just like, okay, you know, I've already, that's why I said, I was like, I don't want to go back out in the field and write tickets. I know I can do so much more with my, with my life, you know, yeah. you know, further my career. And, um, yeah, the DA's office has given me that challenge and hopefully it'll, you know, it'll take me somewhere where I really want to go into, which is cybersecurity. And it's, it's already heading that direction. So, I feel like the track that I'm on right now was the right track before right. I was unsure, but I 100% definitely, you know, feel that it, it is the right track that, that I'm that I'm going towards. So we'll see. I don't know who who knows where I'll be in a, in a year or two. Yeah, yeah, who so. knows? You know, <laughs> top of Everest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but question that I always like to ask when people like you um, are doing. The different things to you. What do you tell a young person in today's world, where young people seem to be lost more than ever before? Um, there's not a lot of direction. Mm-hmm. What would you tell a young person that was interested in law enforcement? You know, what, what is? I mean, would you encourage it? Would you? I mean, what, what's your take on it? You know, I did have um, girlfriends of mine, their daughters were interested in doing CSI. Um, so when I was working at Tustin, they, I, I had a couple of couple of them come visit me. I, I did, you know, a tour. I kind of sat down with them and explained to them, you know, um, it's not all that what you see on television. And for the most part, I know when they see CSI or law enforcement, they think, oh, it's so cool. I want to do that job, I think it's such a cool job, but what they don't understand is, you know, all the hours that go, you know, that are involved with it, working weekends. And, you know, with this, these new generations that are coming in, they do not want to work the weekends. <laughs> they, they have a set, they come in with a set schedule, like these are the only days I can work and, or I cannot work, you know, holidays and it's like law enforcement. It's not like that. It's not like that. You're working whatever shift they're going to give you. And after speaking with two of the girls that I've, um, that I took on, under my wing, they had since, cause I told them you need to find something that you're passionate about, not something that you think that is cool because that's not, you need to be, um, into something that you're interested in. Right. When, when I got into CSI, that's all I ever wanted to do since I was 12 years old, um, and that's what I strive to do, you know, what I focused on. And so with these young, you know, the younger age group coming in, once I explain to them and once they hear that it doesn't pay well, you know, that's one of the factors and they're working weekends and um, they really don't know too much about it other than what they see on TV. Um, I I kind of deterred them into doing something different, different mm-hmm. because they're coming in with, oh, I think it's just, just cool. Well, you don't want to. Yeah, that, in. yeah, that. That shininess about the position, right. that fades quickly. Oh, yeah. It's, even to this day, even when I meet people, it's like, oh, my God, that's such a cool job. And, you know, I kind of cut it short because that's not something that I want to be known for, like doing CSI, you know, crime scenes. Yeah. Um, when you do it for so long, it, you know, you, you, um, you take all of these images with you. And, and that's the thing that people don't understand. They don't see like... Yeah, sometimes there are times where I suffer from PTSD when I look at, you know, like a gazebo, for instance, and that brings me back to a a scene or like if I look at a garden hose. And these are like little things that Mm -hmm. you would never you you wouldn't even know why I'm I'm looking at these things and it and it, you know, and it and it gives me PTSD. PTSD. But like I said, they don't understand like everything that goes on with that with that position yeah it skews your vision of the simplest things right and and i mean to this day i've got things that are over 25 years old that Mm -hmm. still pop up yeah you know that that are their their visions as though it happened yesterday Right. And they come at the strange. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. You, you have, you, you know, you're, you're, you're wired to kind of file it away. Yeah. And you don't, you know, when you're out there on the scene, you kind of just like, you, you don't think about it. 
But then it's like one day, five years from down the line, you look at something and it just immediately triggers you and you're thinking, wow, that's been stored in my memory this whole time. Yeah. And, you know, it just comes out. At the random, weirdest, yeah. random, random, weirdest times. I, I have actually woke up for no reason in mm-hmm. the middle of the night, and it would be 2 or 3 o'clock, and something right. pops in. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't know what I was dreaming. I don't know what is there. And then all of a sudden that vision comes into your head, and there is no going back to sleep. Right. There is no, you know, pushing it out of your head and just being, you know, and especially... Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's this way for everybody, but for me, in the middle of the night, my my mind is uncontrollable. Mm-hmm. I mean, there there is absolutely no way that I'm going to, <laughs> you know, tame it and bring it under control and push something away. It's just you know, then it just runs rampant. That's right. It's craziness. Yeah, but that right. that is definitely a part of law enforcement that I believe that departments have. Uh, let down yeah you know their their officers i believe that there should be annual uh psychological testing i believe that there should there should be um psychological uh not just evaluations Mm -hmm. but also uh help for you know no questions asked Mm -hmm. you don't have to go through a, a a battery of testing you don't have to explain why it's just i think i need it Mm -hmm. yeah you know i i think that you know we have to give recognition that it is a fucked up job Mm -hmm. and it's not a job for everybody but the men and women that are doing it deserve as much help Mm -hmm. if needed that that we can absolutely give them yeah i mean because i know when they get off of work they the first thing when you get home, you don't want to talk to your significant other about any of this stuff. Mm-mm. So you 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 hold it in and you act like everything's fine. And I think years and years of doing that, it's just going to get to you. It will eventually mm-hmm. get to you. And, and the odd part about it is that you don't want to bring it home to your family. Right. Okay. I think everybody just un- would understand that. Right. But it's also in the environment. You don't take it to your peers either. Right. Because there's a certain, um, I don't know if it's just an ego thing or a, it's a, the, 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 you know, and I'm being very sexist here, the mm-hmm. male macho kind of, you know, I can handle everything right. and you try to talk to somebody else about it and they'll immediately downplay it mm-hmm. because they don't want to deal with it. Mm-hmm. You know, so you don't have anybody to take it to. And that's why I'm saying that there needs to be the, an in-house psychologist that you can just walk in the door. No mm-hmm. appointment needed, no questions asked, and be able to sit and talk about something. Mm-hmm. Well, I tried to get him to get my cat come in and <laughs> <laughs> walk around or, you know, sit with me for a little bit. <laughs> or pets, you know, bring your pets yeah. in or something. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's got to be something. Yeah. You know, something, something definitely does need mm-hmm. to change. Defunding is not the answer. No. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, but, but helping and understanding and, and I think better training. Right. Way yeah. better training. I mean, you know, there needs to be more training. I agree with that. Well, and it, it has to be not a four hour training class Mm -hmm. and sign here that you've already taken it so if something happens okay well we did training no Mm -hmm. that's not training right it's got to be more regular than that it's got to be more in depth than that and you know um and and maybe even it needs to start at the academy Mm -hmm. you know the i think the i think that the academies are still being run pretty much along the same lines as they always have they've had to clean it up you can't swear you can't you know do all the things to the recruits that you used to be able to you right. know like i remember <laughs> yeah. but, but uh they they definitely need to change how they're bringing new recruits in you know so i don't know i think they got a lot of work to do you know but you know we the citizens i think that we rally around i mm-hmm. think that the majority of the people i think that the, you know all of us that are in the middle that are not extreme right not extreme left all of us in the middle recognize and need the police officers and i think that 
I see it a lot of support mm-hmm. when, when I'm out. You know, it's very rare that I'm someplace and you see a couple of police officers having lunch that somebody doesn't pick up that tab. Right. Or some, you know, citizen doesn't come by and say thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, I have hope. Yeah. Yeah, I have hope. <laughs> I hope. Well, I'm happy to have already hung up that part of my life. Yeah. And- do something. Yeah, I know. It's funny how we got off on track, you know. (laughs) Okay, this podcast is no longer about Denise. (laughs) Uh, So let's, okay, you know, you're, you're off, you're, you're, you've got your new career going. It sounds exciting. Um, Talk about your passion. There's so much there I want to find out because, you know, I've, I've always been impressed with you and your hiking and mm-hmm. some of the places that you have hiked and, you know, some of the preparations and everything. But you seem like you're now taking it to a whole different level. So it's funny because the last time we talked about we were training um, to do Mount Whitney. So that mm-hmm. was our that was our goal, Jackie and I. And um, like I said, unfortunately, she, you know, she injured her knee early on last year and. Um, I continued my training. That was my goal was to, was to complete Whitney. And I was able to score some tickets for October and, um, explain that. So every year, I believe it's in March. I want to say they, um, offer a lottery and what the lottery is, is you, um, go online to try to gain access, um, cause they close off Whitney, Right now, it's open until April, so anybody can go and try to hike it, but it's more of a mountaineer route because now there's snow on the mountain. So um, after April, they, you know, they close it off, and the only way to to hike Whitney is to get a a permit. So there are two different types of permits. There's a one-night or one-day, yeah, one-night pass to do Whitney, so you can do it in one and, and a day. Um, or you can backpack and do two days and that'll give you some time to like backpack in and, um, kind of get you acclimated. And then you have the next night to, to summit. So I opted for the one day, you know, permit because I thought, yeah, you know, that's what I'm striving to do. I want to, I want to complete Whitney in one day. Whitney's about 20, 20 something miles. I, and it's funny because I should remember this, but I had such a bad, um, time doing it that <laughs> did you really yes i did um i was training for it all through the beginning of the year all up until october until my my date which was october 2nd and um it was jack jackie ended up coming with us for support and um i did it with my other hiking partner enrico um so we ended up going out there early morning um, just to get acclimated, had breakfast, we had it all planned out. Um, we were just going to spend some time, you know, uh, kind of driving around the area before we sat into, um, you know, checking into Whitney portal. Once we were in Whitney portal, we. So explain what's Whitney portal. So that's the, the, the campground. So you check into the campground okay. and you find parking. Some people camp there prior to doing the hike or, or some people, um, We'll book a room, a hotel room, which is down the street. We didn't. We just thought we'll just sleep in the car. <laughs> yeah, that did not work for me. I thought I had it planned out, and we were going to park the car and go to sleep at 8 p.m., and our start time was midnight. I, I just could not sleep. It was just too hard for me to sleep in the car, and there was people, traffic, you know, people just – out and about because there are all these hike other hikers everybody's showing up and everybody's showing up and i was trying to go to sleep and i was just laying there i started looking at the clock and enrico was on the driver's side and we kept looking at the clock and he kept having to get up to go use the restroom so all these little things that just kept waking me up till finally the alarm went off and it was time for us to get ready and i hadn't i didn't sleep i didn't sleep at all so I was up for 24 hours and I was debating whether or not I should do this hike. And I was, as I was packing my bag and getting everything situated, I said, you know what, <clears throat> let me just go assess it. If I can't summit or if I, you know, I'll just turn around. Let me just, right now I have the energy to do it. Um, 
and we'll kind of play by ear as we as we trek along. And I was telling sharing this information with Enrico. And um, one thing about me is if I say I'm going to do something and I, you know, and I don't want to jump around, but um, when I say I want to do something, I I will push as hard as I can to make it happen. If I were dying, obviously, or like if I felt like I was going to die, obviously I was going to turn around. But if my legs were still moving and I was breathing and I was able to, um, you know, kind of a mind matter situation, mind over matter situation, I'm, I'm, I was, I knew I was going to get through it. But boy, that's that's, a, that's, a, <laughs> that's an interesting thought. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll kind of segue here a second. Because I've been thinking a lot about that particular mm-hmm. mindset mm-hmm. because it's really prevalent in a lot of Instagram today mm-hmm. that do it at all costs. Right. Be a warrior. You don't quit. You don't give up. You never say, you know, that whole kind of, you know, I, it, it's a stupid mentality. It is a stupid mentality. And, you know, I don't really want to talk about the hiker that just passed away, but it made me over, it made me think about my decision makings and that, that, you know, when I look back on the Whitney, my Whitney hike and I'm hiking on no sleep and when you're hiking on no sleep and now you're shuffling your, your feet and I can see how easily you can lose your footing and just fall off. Right. You know, there's some parts of Whitney, some sections that I was just terrified and I, because I, I was shuffling at that point. And then, um, you know, and when I look back at it, I'm like, why didn't I, why didn't I turn around? Mm-hmm. Why didn't, you know, why didn't I just say, you know what, this, this wasn't my time. Why don't I just, but. My... Well, un- unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately to be the type of person that would consider mm-hmm. climbing Whitney. It's not the type of person that's going to easily quit when they think they still have a fighting chance to do it. So, you know, a lot of that is just in your makeup. It's who you are. It's how you think. It's how you, you know, it's how you view life. And the only thing and the only way that that's going to change is through experience and, you know, becoming more wise Mm -hmm. in what it is that you're doing and how you're doing it. And also not looking at just the outcome of what it is, Mm -hmm. but also looking at the roadblocks that are along the way. And, you know, there, 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 there's a lot to, to that, that, that could probably be actually a whole podcast in and by itself with, with the mindset of those of us that do extreme things like i was telling you you know i've always done extreme mm-hmm. always doing outrigger canoe you know five six eight miles offshore from dana point to catalina mm-hmm. crossing i mean you know it's it's not always easy it's not always simple um i've i've raced motorcycles on on track and crashed at 100 miles an hour these 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 extreme Sports that people take on mm-hmm. are only taken on by people that have that mindset of whatever it takes. Right. And until you learn how to throttle that back at times, you're really living on a very thin line. Right. I learned so much about myself on that hike, like just, you know, from just going through the going through the motions and like I said, when I look back at it, you know, I, sh- I probably should have just said, Hey, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm feeling the, um, the altitude and I need to communicate more with my, my partners or I'm, who I'm hiking with. I can't just be quiet and not say anything. Right. Um, but there were a point where we were maybe two miles away from summit and, um, the acclimation was starting to hit me. And so I remember sitting there for, a little bit. And I was telling Enrico, I was like, Hey, I think I'm going to sit here because I can feel, I can feel my heart like beating really fast, my chest tightening up. And I think I need some time to kind of just sit here and, um, give me like 10, 15 minutes. And so I remember telling myself, uh, don't freak out, don't panic, 
because I, my whole time, the whole time I was thinking, I was like, what if I have a heart attack? I can feel my heart like beating so <laughs> fast. What if I have a heart attack? How are they going to come out here and rescue me? And so it was like a lot of, of just calming myself down. Finally, when I was able to like breathe in and breathe out and like relax myself is when I was able to push the last two miles. Mm -hmm. And then finally, when we reached, you know, the summit, we weren't even on the summit for that long. I don't even remember being on the summit. Um, I just remember I wanted to get off the summit. I was I was done. Mm -hmm. And then having to hike all the way back down, it was the most painful and most um, hardest experience that I had to do because I had to get off the mountain. There was no... Otherwise, I'd have to be rescued. Right. You know, and I was like, I am not getting rescued. I'm just going to try to shuffle my way through. We took a lot of breaks um, coming down. Finally, when we're off the mountain, I just, I was done. I was, because I hadn't slept all day. And I, I still don't even know how I did that without any sleep. Yeah. Well, it's not even just how did you do it at that point in time and the hours that it took you to right. do it. But it's how many days did it take to recover? Oh, my God. I was out for a month. I did not want to hike. I didn't want to think about any trails. It actually put a bad taste in my mouth from hiking. I just didn't want yeah. to have any. So I took about two months off from hiking. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, I saw another friend of mine hiking in the snow. And it just, I was like, it just clicked all over again for me. And I was telling Rika, I was like, you know what? I'm ready to take on these snow hikes. I am so done dealing with just, you know, I mean, I've already done all these other trails and I right. needed a challenge. Mm -hmm. And so I was ready to start learning how to hike in the snow. And so we, um, I've hiked in the snow before, but I wanted, wanted it to be a little bit more challenging with like the weather, the extreme weather, the snowing and the rain, and, um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's, that's where I'm at now and training to do that. You know, I'm just doing all these different little hikes with not extreme, extreme weather, but a little light rain, just mm -hmm. kind of get myself acclimated to these, the, that's when it becomes mountaineering is because now you're, you're dealing with all of the different wind factors and, um, the snow conditions. And I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not even ready to to hike like the Bali bowl and, and do that because at that point that's, that's a mountaineering route. Right. So, um, yeah, so I'm just, like I said, I'm just doing the little hikes w with snow, but not anywhere near the bowl. Cause that's going to be my next, um, my next major hike that I'm going to try to accomplish is the Bali bowl. Mm -hmm. So, so going back, going back to Whitney, you were training for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that wasn't just a, you know, I'm going to no, win, was... win the, get the lottery, get a day, and I'm just going to go, you know, go for a hike. That was something that you knew was going to be strenuous. Mm -hmm. You knew that it was, it, it, um, had a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. you know, built in. Um, what'd you do to prepare for it? So there were a couple of hikes that, um, a lot of the other hikers do, um, in preparation for, for Whitney and one being to hike San Gregonio, which is about 20 miles. And the reason why you're going to, you want to, to train and hike San Gregonio is because it's a quick, it's about the same amount of miles. Um, so just getting used to walking that distance. Um, so that was one of the hikes that I did it have the, this, it doesn't have the same altitude, right? Um, it has a, quite a bit altitude, but not as not as, you know, not as bad as as Whitney. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a period of time, like I said, when it was two miles in, the air just got very, very thin. That's when I felt it. That's when I realized, like, oh, man, I think I'm in trouble. Um, but you can't panic. You just need right. to relax and what, calm down. What, what altitude did you start? You know, what? It was about 12,000, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and Whitney is about 14. Um but yeah, that's, and you know, your training with San Gregonio and, and Baldy, and those are like, they're just the 10,000 within the 10,000. Um, but you're still getting, you're still feeling that altitude. You're just having to get your body used to it. So San Gregonio, I did that a few times before I did Whitney. Um, there is another hike that I did is called C2C, which is cactus to clouds. 
and basically you start in downtown Palm Springs and then you hike all the 10,000, I think 10,834 feet from downtown Palm Springs all the way to San Jacinto Peak. Mm -hmm. And that's about a 20 mile hike as well. Um, but yeah, that, <laughs> that was another crazy hike because, uh, that elevation gain from the ground up all the way to 10,000 feet, that was extraneous. Um, but that was another hike that prepared me for Winnie and I was able to, to, I think that's why I was able to do that without any sleep is because of that hike. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did that hike. I also did, um, a couple times doing Baldy, the old Baldy trail. There's different routes to do Baldy. Um, so I did that on top of all of that, I still work out in the gym and I will do, you know, I, I'll, I'll be on the Stairmaster for about 45 minutes and then I'll weight train, you know, cause that all comes to play. You need to make sure you're still lifting weights and cause you still have to carry that bag. Mm -hmm. You know, my bag's about 20 to 30 pounds. And if you're not, you're not working, you know, your arms or your legs, um, you know, you're just going to tire yourself out. And so for me having to do all that in combination with, with my hiking, um, I think that made a big difference. So how, when you're, when you're climbing and you're doing, uh, 10,000 feet, mm -hmm. 20 miles, how, how much, how much time, you know, what do you, what, what amount of time do you give yourself? You know, we gave ourselves, I want to say like 12 to 15 hours for Whitney. And we went way over that amount because I was taking a lot of breaks. And normally I don't take that many breaks, but Whitney really, really did a toll on my body. I was, was, was it, do you think that it was a combination of things or do you think that it was the sleep? It was, was the sleep. Your, yeah. It that, was that the was sleep. Done. My, my body was done. It was it was checked out. I was at that point, I was just shuffling my feet and mentally telling myself, you have five miles, you have four miles, you have three miles. Even when it was getting down to two and one, I, I, there was times I was like, I'm just going to sit here and sleep the night. Yeah. You know, I'm only a mile away. I'll, I'll just fall asleep here and then I can just walk out and, you know, in the morning, that's how bad it was. Yeah. And I've never had to take that many breaks. So I knew like my body was, it was done. It was done. Yeah, it was done. What about, um, while you're climbing, you, you, you carry your bag, you, I'm sure you, you know, you've got, uh, nutrition figured out, you know, mm -hmm. what, what are you eating along the way? Or were you eating at this, were you, when you're in that state mm -hmm. and your, your mind is and your body are both checking out, mm -hmm. it's easy to neglect or forget your nutrition and yeah. eat and feed the body that's mm -hmm. wanting wanting to quit. So two questions, you know, what is it that you take with you? Mm -hmm. And when you were on your way down, were you being reminded mm -hmm. to eat, you reminded to drink, or was it still something that you were cognitive of? So it actually all starts before you hike. So you should be hydrating at mm -hmm. least a gallon um, the day before. So I typically, anytime I'm doing these type of extraneous hikes, I at least have a gallon of water the night before. You need to hydrate before. Um, also, you should be having a big meal before. In the morning, you should be having something, you know, whether it be a banana or um, oatmeal or something. You should have something in your system to get you going. Um, what I started learning about myself within the last year when I first initially started hiking, I was I was eating just like nuts in a granola bar. And then, you know, once I started doing like these more extraneous hikes, you need you need substance. You yes. need food. Food food is fuel. Yes. I mean, we all know you need you need to keep that, you know, engine running. And if you're not you're not eating anything, um, you're gonna fill it. And something know? a little bit easier to digest too and that's not the easiest thing for the for the body i mean you're already right. and this is something i i think that you know people may not think about mm -hmm. and that's when the body is digesting mm -hmm. something like say not, that's taking energy mm -hmm. that's taking energy the, the 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 more that you can consume mm -hmm. that's easily digestible and still give you you know the the nutrients that mm -hmm. you need to continue on is yeah, I mean, because if you're doing these extraneous hikes and you're already an hour or two hours in, you're at a calorie deficit now. Mm -hmm. you know, now you've burned off 
everything that you had the night before and whatever you're eating that morning, it's, 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 it's done. So I started noticing when I feel fatigued or, um, not enough water I have to check. And during the winter hikes, it's a, I'm so notorious for not drinking water for whatever reason during snow hikes or winter hikes, you neglect drinking water and that's right. it's it's key like you need to be drink hydrating so i have to always remind myself hey drink some water anytime we had a break drink some water drink some water um i think that's another factor what hurt me at whitney is not drinking enough water yeah yeah most endurance sports with you know the the mantra mm -hmm. is if you're if you're thirsty it's too late mm -hmm. you need to be drinking when you're not thirsty because what you're trying to do is replenish the the, the the liquid mm -hmm. before you actually need it right once you get to the point where you need it you know dehydration is just around the corner right so i so you asked um what i do take so i also take um a big uh a big bottle of coconut water mm -hmm. oh my gosh that's like a lifesaver i always say oh i need my lifesaver because it i i feel hydrated drinking coconut water i also use um liquid iv um so i put that into my water and then I also have salt tabs. Um, anytime you cramp up, you know, uh, I always take a salt tab. Um, and then I either pack, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, something with substance, some protein, or like a sandwich. Um, but I need something. I can't just live off nuts, especially if I'm right. going to be doing a 20-mile right. hike. And then I also have like just bars and and you know my nuts and, and fruits too so but right. it it i mean that adds up so you got to be mindful too yeah because that's weight extra added weight and so you don't want to over over pack because right. it's you know 20 or 30 pounds on your back all day like today you know my back is hurting just sitting just, here just sitting yeah yeah, yeah. But yeah, I've uh, in in some of the, the long distance sports that that I have done, you know, I it, there were so many um, quick, easy mm -hmm. to digest and intake mm -hmm. fuels that you can get. That uh, I would back when I was doing a lot of cycling, I would take goo, you know, just suck it because it's mm -hmm. it's just fast and it's easy. just fast yeah. easy mm -hmm. and, and it's giving you a, 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 a boost. boost yeah um you know um i've done in uh outrigger canoe keep it with me on the boat so when i got out of the canoe and got picked up by the boat i would have i would chop up um protein bars mm -hmm. in the little bite-sized pieces so you're mm -hmm. not eating a lot of it and a few of those and what i found is just sustaining the the intake over the duration mm -hmm. rather than waiting you know i i always believe that once you wait and you get to the point that you feel that you've depleted mm -hmm. all your calories and now the body is is slowing down it's almost too late to get the calories in there yeah. quick enough to recover from it right you know once you hit that point recovery is kind of out the door right so and you can get in trouble really quick, especially yeah. out in hiking. You, like, yeah. you can get in trouble really quick. Yeah. So yeah, you just need to be mindful, um, preparing the night before and packing the right meals. Yeah. So. Uh, and I love the peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. I mean that is just the. It's <laughs> That's a, like the best. It is the tastiest. Yeah. You know, treat, and yet it it's just packed with a lot of energy. And when I see it, I'm like thinking, I was like, oh my god, I'm thinking. Thank God I decided to pack this peanut butter. Yeah. It's just like the the best thing to mm -hmm. eat it, when you're out there. <laughs> oh, it, it definitely is. You know, when you when when you just get to that point, it's something that you, that's the other thing too about nu nutrition. Mm -hmm. In these cases, you want something that you want to eat. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have something in there that's going to be drudgery and it tastes right. awful or yeah, whatever see? because you're not going to do it. You put a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in you're front of anybody, it, yeah. you're going to eat that. Yeah. Baby. Well, see, that's another thing, too. And I'm still in that mindset of, you know, um, the bodybuilding mindset. Like, yeah. oh, my God, I, there's so much fat in this. And that's like, no, stop thinking that way. You just burned 1,700 calories. You need to eat this. Yeah. This is not. Yeah, fat and, is not something yeah. you need to worry so about. I'm st yeah, I'm starting to learn that concept and not think bodybuilder went out, out there because this is not show ready. This is no. like survival mode. Well, yeah, because, you know, show ready, you're starving to death, but you're on a stage and there's a 7-Eleven mm -hmm. just down the street. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not too far away. Right. That's so. why I'm like, no, I 
I need to stop thinking that body yeah. me- builder mentality. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's more survival mode than anything. So, yeah. Yeah. Going back to Whitney now, you, you, the experience that you had there, mm-hmm. um, aside from sleeping, what would you do different in your training? What would you do different, you know, on your, in your planning? And, you know, it's like you said, you just, you're going to sleep in the car. Mm-hmm. That didn't work out. You know, uh, you know, did you take the right foods with you? Mm-hmm. Did you have enough water with you? Did you really plan? Mm-hmm. You, what, what was your planning? I mean, and it's, and it's understandable on your first time out that you're going to screw it up. Right. So Cause you're excited. You're like yeah. anxious. And I was anxious the whole time. Did you take it? Did you take it? Um, as seriously as you would now after experiencing it? Or do you think that you took it a little bit too lightly going in that it was just going to be, yeah, it was going to be strenuous, but it, you know, I've done this one, this one, this one, and it's all going to be kind of similar. Yeah. You know, it was like a ripple effect. Once I didn't sleep, I knew it was, it wasn't, it was going to go downhill from that. You know, my confidence level in summiting was there. I just knew that there were going to be a lot of challenge challenges along the way to get me there. And that was all mental challenge. So, um, I even spoke to Enrico who I did the, the, um, w- who I hiked with on Whitney. And I explained to him, I said, you know, the, I want to redeem myself and do Whitney again, but this time around, I want to do the two day. I don't need to prove to myself that I can do it in a day. I've already proved myself that I did it, you know, without sleep even, but I want to enjoy it. So I want to actually go out there and hike the first eight miles, go to camp, set up camp, relax, look at the stars. I don't want to rush and like, you know, I want to explore Whitney and actually like make it, make me feel like I actually, you know, enjoyed it. Because Isn't it (laughs) funny sometimes how we get involved in these these things that we do and we forget the reason that we're doing right. it. It's like it's to enjoy it. Just, it's to have yeah. the fun. It's to it's to be able to create a good memory that you can look back on, you know. I mean it was a we, nightmare. We, 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 <laughs> we got a, we got enough PTSD in our yeah. lives. We we don't need to go out and have we be anxious. one of them. I was yeah. anxious the whole time. I was stressed. I was looking at the time. I wasn't really I don't even remember some of the landscapes that I was. So all of these things, like I missed out on the beauty of what Whitney has to offer. Well, you missed out on doing it Denise's way because, you know, because I follow you so closely on Mm -hmm. Instagram Mm -hmm. and I love the pictures that, Mm -hmm. that you take, (laughs) you know, and they're, they're fun. They're kind of goofy sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, but they always, um, always, always have that, that, that flavor of fun mm-hmm. and enjoyment. Right. You know, so to me, that's why you're doing it mm-hmm. is, is to get to the top and, you know, do you, do your pictures and your poses mm-hmm. and all the things that make you, you, <laughs> yeah. you know, that the rest of us love to see. And, uh, and, and, and then I think, you know, then I think it's worth your time. You yeah. Know? You know, like I said, when I, when I, you know, when I reached the top and I summoned, I was like, I was not even up there for 10 minutes. I just wanted to get down. So my whole mindset, that whole trek was summit and get off. That was it. I wasn't focusing on anything else, not the landscape, not the people around me, nothing. I just wanted to get off that mountain. And yeah, that's why I was off. You know, I stopped hiking for two months. And then now looking back, I told Enrico, I said, you know what, this year, 2023, I want to go back and redeem myself, but I don't want to do it in the the same fashion that we did and try to do it in one day. Right. I want to enjoy it. I want to go out there. Let's hike the first eight miles, set up camp, enjoy the stars, enjoy the people that you meet along the way, enjoy the landscape. And hopefully I'll win, you know, um, the lottery again and kind of set a date. So when when you do it like like that and you do a two day so Mm -hmm. you can start the first day get to a certain point, mm-hmm. get to your campground, campground, mm-hmm. then go up. Now, do you come back? Can you stay at that campground again and then follow down? Or is it just 
camp once, finish the hike up, and then you have to finish it all back down. Yeah, you have to finish the, the next day, mm-hmm. which my plan would be different. So I would hike into the campground, stay the night, and then get up super early um, to do the, the last few few miles and catch the sunrise mm-hmm. at, on Whitney. And I think that I think that would make it a little bit more special to me at that, sure. you know. Yeah, um, well, it gives you more time that you can right. stay up there. You know, because it's kind of like Everest when you see all the work, the effort that these guys put into mm-hmm. making that climb. And then they get up there and they're there literally five or 10 minutes and they right. have to get down because get down. there's weather or there's oxygen issues or there's, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. So I'm hoping to win the lottery again. So yeah. <laughs> we'll see if I do, then I'll do like a two. That's crazy that day. you have to have a lottery for the, yeah. for the, for the thing, mm-hmm. you know, there's a. Oh yeah, that <laughs> yeah, that's my photo. <laughs> yeah, there's what is that Whitney? Yep. Yeah. That's that's it, and you can tell my face. I wasn't, you know, that's not my normal pose. It's just that's, like no, that's definitely very somber. Not. Yeah, yeah. I I I don't I don't see the the victory flash no. and you no, know, I very don't. Uh, yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Beautiful though. It is beautiful. Too bad you missed it. It's the <laughs> highest point of California. Yeah. You know that is unbelievable. Yeah. Gosh, I can't believe. Yeah, that is really too bad that you got up there and really didn't take it all in because that's, no, I that's didn't. really I was, a sight. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh my gosh, I was the highest point of California, and I didn't even. Yeah. Like I didn't even enjoy it. Yeah. So I have to go back. Yeah, yeah. You'll you'll do it. Yeah. But you'll do it more prepared. What are you going to do differently? Yeah, just you know, like I said, just do stay the two nights and. Um, what about preparation? Is preparation going to stay kind of about it'll the same? It'll stay the same. Um, maybe change, uh, maybe do a little bit more uh, acclimation hikes. Mm-hmm. So maybe do other 14ers that are around there or th- 13ers that are around in the Sierras and kind of yeah. get used to those other other one, uh, you know, like Agassiz and there's Langley as well. So these are other ones that you can do. Um but I need to venture out. I'm I've been in the San San Gabriel and San Bernardino. I need to go to the Sierras and kind of, um, you know. Absolutely, that's one that's one thing about when you start putting in mm-hmm. all the time and all the effort and everything mm-hmm. that that it takes to, um, you know, climb a Whitney. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You you at that point now you want to venture out. Now you want to take all that experience and and all that training and mm-hmm. everything and. There are so many mountains oh, to climb, <laughs> so, many. so many mountains, so little time. So that's why I am very, um, I'm very selfish with my time. Mm-hmm. You know, I try not to schedule um, any events, like even with girlfriends and stuff. Like you know, my friend Jen's here, so she mm-hmm. can, <laughs> she can. She's so quiet yeah. over there. <laughs> she refuses to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see that we got her voice <laughs> but uh, yeah like she, you know there are times where i always tell my girlfriends i was like oh i can't do it this day because i have to hike it's just so, too much planning and you know right. i only get the weekends off you right know? and so um but it's good to be i think it's healthy and i think people need to do more of of that i'm that way mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know um you know I, i'm very uh careful about you know where my time goes mm-hmm. because it's there's so very few free hours to go do the things that I want to do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so, and, and it's even more difficult with, you know, with Jill and, uh, law school for the last four years, oh which gosh, has been yeah. so, so time consuming on her part, hasn't given us a lot of time together. So I'm really looking forward to this last few weeks of mm-hmm. training, you know, for the bar and get the bar done and behind her and we can go back to, because she's very active. She's, you know, she runs marathons and right. puts she's in very a lot impressive. of hours. Yeah, and yeah. then getting, you know, doing, studying for the bar, that's just impressive. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, to, to, start, to start law school mm-hmm. at, in itself. At 51. Right, yeah. You know, is, is an impressive feat, mm-hmm. you know, to take on. But then to graduate and uh, be at the top of her class. Wow, smart woman. Smart, smart woman. I know, way smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it's really it was law school too you know kind of venturing in a different direction mm-hmm. for a second but law school is just it's crazy because she started that class with 127 other students wow four years later she graduates top of the class and she's one of 14 
Wow. The attrition rate is just unbelievable. unbelievable. That just goes to show you that some people have it in them and just some people don't. You She's know? when you were I was I was smiling and thinking about it when you were talking about your determination and mm -hmm. you, your grit and you don't give in, you don't quit and you know, I mean they got to pull you off the mountain. Right. You know, that's yeah. Jill. Yeah. That's I mean, Jill. She, she's I don't think anyone, unless they've kind of gone through mm -hmm. law school or medical school or, or whatever, uh, understand the sacrifices that you make mm -hmm. doing oh, yeah. that. I mean, she missed out. The girls were playing club volleyball. She missed out on almost all tournaments. Yeah, but look where she's at now. Yeah. That's yeah. just impressive, yeah. you know. Well, the, fortunately, the girls were old enough, and they supported it, and mm -hmm. they were able to say, "We don't care. Don't worry about it. It's just a volleyball game." And you know, they, but she would still cry, and she'd still miss it, and mm -hmm. you know, just but, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's amazing, amazing sacrifice. Yeah, you know, sacrifice a lot. Yeah, especially if you want to get wherever you want to get at. Yeah, yeah, so. and all she wants to do, she wants to do trial. She wants to. You know, be be an attorney, and and I can see her doing that. <laughs> oh yeah, she definitely. Well, well, you guys will be working together <laughs> yeah, one day, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be you know that be that'll be you know, it'll be really good for her. You know, I'm really really proud of her. But it's uh, but it's it's also it's like we're talking about it's that it's having a passion mm -hmm. about something. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't been able to do Whitney if you weren't passionate about it. No, and I always tell people it's like I envision it. So I manifest it, like I see it, I see myself summoning, but at the same time, you need to work for it also. Oh, yeah. You can't just yeah. think, oh yeah, I'm, I can go and do it, you know? Like yeah. I envisioned myself working at the DA's office. I was, it was, I knew I was gonna get in there and I, you know, envisioning it and manifesting it, you know, or one thing, but you actually have to work hard and, yeah. and do the steps to get there right it's not going to be handed to you no that's you know that that's the the premise and in, in how i view law of attraction mm -hmm. you know you have to you have to visualize it mm -hmm. and, and visualization isn't uh, isn't just wishing it it isn't just you know it's literally seeing yourself and it's mm -hmm. hard to explain to somebody that hasn't actually done it but right. if you actually envision envisioned something and see yourself there and actually feel yourself mm -hmm. there it will open doors right yeah. But just because a door opens doesn't mean you're allowed to walk through it. Right. There are things that you have to do to prepare yourself to walk through the door. Right. And if you're not willing to do those things, those doors will close as quickly as they open. Mm -hmm. You know, it it is, um, that's just what I would refer to as a law of the universe. That right. is just the way it is. If you want something bad enough, you have to see yourself there. If you see yourself there, then you better do all the steps it takes to get you exactly. where you want to go. Exactly. It's hard work. It's effort. It's sacrifice. It's There's so much tied to it, but that's the reward. Mm -hmm. That's the reward. It's like, you know, I, I, I like to say that, you know, effort equals reward. Right. Without effort, you don't get the reward. Exactly. I mean, then all of us could be summoning Whitney, you know? Oh, ab absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'd all be able to go without training. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's no big deal. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, last time we kind of stayed... Within, yeah. Yeah, I think we had boundaries. Yeah, I think we did. You, were, you were more... Now you were, I'm just like, you, you know what? You high strung. Yeah, I just don't didn't want people seeing me out in the field. Mm -hmm. and, but now I'm kind of hidden in my little... Yeah, I'm more cautious. Even though I'm taking yeah. major cases, I mean, and I'm not really out in the field... Yeah. So I'm hidden in my little cubicle now. Yeah, that's kind of, I'm always very um, careful if I start to bring up mm -hmm. law enforcement and my family and, you know, because I know that, you know, it's fair to protect them. Yeah. And not only that, I mean, some of these followers, I don't know, you know, that mm -hmm. you just never know with these followers. It's, yeah. So I kind of keep it, um, keep my personal life. Mm -hmm personal and yeah. kind of stick with my hiking you won't really see too much of my personal life no there. no no you don't and, and you've got quite a fall how did you I mean, you've got over ten thousand. yeah that thousand. actually kind of accumulated over the years of starting with you know bodybuilding mm -hmm. so when 
Instagram was in, in, in its infant stages in 2013. Mm-hmm. I have followers since 2013. You know, wow. they've been following me through these whole, throughout all of these years. And um, well, it's a good story. You yeah. know, you really do. You really have. <clears throat> have a, Brian hates it when I go. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 I think it's just because it, you know, it's his sensory thing in his head, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I I well, I forgot what I was even saying now. <laughs> the followers and like oh yeah, the followers. Uh, yeah, I mean yeah. that you know, that's uh, you know they they can be special. Uh yeah, you know there are times where it's like oh I haven't seen you post in two days or three days. I'm thinking to myself like I do not um my life does not revolve around this instagram you yeah. know and i'm not here to entertain you i'm not here to <laughs> give you what you want to see i'm just here to but you are entertained yeah i mean it's <laughs> some of it i try to to be in in a sense a little entertaining with my hikes and i actually have switched it up this year or what i'm planning to do this year um because the hiking community is such a small community like we all kind of follow each other Mm -hmm. and kind of encourage each other and um you know there are times where we actually run into each other on you know on some of these summits and we're like oh my god i've been following you for so long and i'm so happy to meet you um but i don't see a lot of um you know you always when we follow all these other individuals we always think like what does this person do what is this person is about they you know all you see is their is their hiking you don't really know them as a person who this person is all about right so what i had started doing this year is starting to hike with um other other instagram hikers that i do follow um just like today so happened to uh, hike with jonah and she's um i was talking to you about her earlier she's somebody that you may want to bring on the show she's just she's just a little spitfire and she has been hiking for quite a long time and i was so appreciative to hike with her today because she actually was able to share some insight about as to why she hikes and what she does to prepare and what I learned from her hiking today is she's very prepared Mm -hmm. for anything that can happen with weather conditions which opened my mindset of man I'm I'm not fully prepared as she is you know Um, she had everything with you know with different jackets you know, different layers of clothing. She had um, a poncho. She had emergency blanket. Like she had all this gear, and it was a minor hike that we did today. Um, um, but she still had all the all the gear. You know, right. that, and just thinking about it, let's just say, if we were to, um, you know, God forbid, you know, fall off the mountain or something, or and now you now it's survival mode i don't have all these things that she has she can survive i will not survive you know after right. looking at her pack yeah that's jonah <laughs> so um i'll have to i'll have to is, is that's her instagram page yeah right? that's her instagram page okay mm-hmm. i'll have to i'll have to follow mm-hmm. so that yeah can, you'll see her so we can get a little bit of history i don't know if she'll notice i'm even following her but maybe through you yeah you know. i told her i was going to mention her on here right? because i'm like i you know she's 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 an entrepreneur as well so she's trying to open up her own um business and kind of be like a, a guide mm-hmm. if you will in the hiking community you know how there's fitness trainers mm-hmm. in the gym well she wants to do something with hiking mm-hmm. Um, and become a guide and do one-on-one with people that want to, you know, she can train you for Whitney, she can train you for San Gregonia, all of these mount- different mountains with all the skills that she I think has. That that's, I think that that's really a great idea. Mm-hmm. Um, th- I've had coaches in, in, a, num- in a number of, of sports that I've been involved mm-hmm. in, and it's even Outrigger Canoe, you know, there are paddling coaches, right? you know, because paddling, it's, not to branch off into what I'm doing, but it's outrigger canoe is not like paddling a canoe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is there is a technique to right. to the paddle mm-hmm. of how you do it, 
you know, because you can't just use your arms. If you just tried to use your arms over, you know, a, a 10 or 12 mile mm-hmm. outing, you'd burn up in the first two miles. Right. Your, your arms would, would turn to jello. So it's, it's about the core and it's mm-hmm. about the back and it's about how you, you get a catch and it's how you pull. And it's, there's so many of these and it takes a long time, but mm-hmm. now they've got paddling coaches. Right, and you need to come hum- and teach you. Sometimes you just need to step back and humble yourself and look at other yeah. people. Yeah, you know that are hiking, um, that can share their expertise with you. Because I'm not, I'm not an expert whatsoever, and I don't like to call myself an expert. I, even though I've been hiking since my early twenties, I am always learning. I am willing to listen to others, yeah. um, and see their experiences. Uh, you know, and the way she packs and. You know, I just like to take in everybody's feedback. You know, Absolutely. That's the only way you're gonna. Well, grow. it's 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 no different. I tell people like with 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 paddling and mm-hmm. the technique of paddling, it's like playing golf. Right. You can learn how to play golf. You can learn the techniques of playing golf, but it's a sport that you will never master. Right. And that's the same thing. And mm-hmm. I think hiking is the same thing. You will forever and ever continue to learn new things mm-hmm. on how to do it, how to, you know, just, you know, what to take with you, how to train for it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's ever evolving. So, yeah. So today this was our, like, like I said, this is our first actual hike together. Just us two. We've hiked together in a group, kind of in a group setting before, but mm-hmm. today it was just us two. So I was kind of um, intimidated because I didn't, you know, she's, like I said, she's just, She's a tiny little thing. She's right. probably as small as Jen. <laughs> and she's <laughs> Yeah, she's tiny and she's carrying this this huge bag and I was kind of intimidated. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm going to have to keep up with Jonah." Um, but, you know, she's just along the way. She was always, you know, asking, right. "Are you okay? We need to communicate." And that was another thing is she was teaching me how you need to always communicate with your partner who you're hiking with, making sure that person is okay. Originally, we were actually supposed to hike Big Iron this morning, so our start time was midnight. As we were heading over there, um, we noticed that the road was closed. So we sat there and we're waiting to see if they were gonna to open it up. But you know, I was looking at the time. I was like, no, we're gonna probably rush through. You know, we had to be back at a certain time, obviously, to sit here yeah. and join yeah. you. <laughs> um, but she had somewhere to go as well and sometimes these things happen so you need to have like a plan b or just you know say hey this day wasn't meant for us let's just call it a night you know where'd you end up going we ended up doing um echo mount echo mountain so we did echo mountain um mount low and um inspiration point so that's actually located in pasadena and it's it's a you know it's a nice beginner hike for somebody we just you know, for us, we're just like, you know what, let's just, we know it's not something that we just wanted to go do. something. we needed to do something. We were so looking forward to big iron in the snow, you know, with the storm coming in, we just wanted that challenge, but obviously the roads closed, there's nothing you can do. Right. And you can't, you know, you can't be upset about it. So we, we had our plan B. So we're like, okay, let's just go to, we'll just go to Pasadena. We know that's going to be open. Even, even though it's kind of, um, light rain, we thought, okay, well, here's some a little bit of action. We got light rain, and then um, I was really tired, so we we sat up against um, against the mountain. She's like, oh, you know, uh, we can take a nap here if you want. And I was like, really? I was like, man, this I've never taken a nap on the mountain before. And she's like, yeah, I do it all the time. So we took a nap for like I want to say a good thirty minutes. Really? Yeah, we were just laying on the <laughs> mountain, like on the side, and. Um, you know, and she had, like I said, that's when I realized like she has all the gear to, you know, to take a nap. You know, I just happened to use my bag and just, you know, um, take that nap. But that's when I started realizing like, you know, if something were to happen to me, I just, I don't have any, any of the, uh, the security that I, to survive, you know, a mountain. So you're changing. You're growing. Yeah, I, you're, I'm you're, growing you're, as I'm. You're growing from these beginner, media, you know, mediocre trails mm-hmm. to now a little bit more extreme to where you're going to need to be more prepared. Yeah, in case I need to stay overnight. Yeah. You know, what if I can't? Right. You know, what if I can't make it out tonight? Or what if it? We we were we kind of 
thought we would get done with this hike in the snow because hiking in the snow, you have to add a few more hours to what you're you normally would hike without the right. snow. It's just a lot more ex, um, extraneous and it takes a lot longer. And you know there are times where you just have to tell yourself like this is not going to happen. We just need to turn around. Right. Which we've I've done that with Enrico um, a few weeks ago. You know? It's it's odd enough to me that you are someplace where you're getting out of the car to begin your hike at midnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, that's, you know, th that's odd in anybody's book. Well, she said that's late for her. She likes to start her hikes at 10 o'clock at night and get it done by like, you know, five or six in the morning. Why? I know. I always tell her, she's like, she loves the challenge. If you talk to her and you... You get to know her. What she explained to me, and which I, this is why I wanted to start hiking with all of these other people because you yep. kind of see why they chose to hike, why they do the, what they do, why yep. she does these extraneous hikes. She was telling me, which I never really thought of. Um, she, you know, within all these past years of hiking, she noticed um, the climate change. You know, mm -hmm. she noticed like in spring, it's so much different now than it was, you know, five or six years ago. Um, so she's starting to look at all these, like what it's like to hike in spring, what it's like to hike in summer, what it's like to hike in winter, um, do it at sun sunrise, do it at sunset. And you can kind of see like all these changes that have been happening along the way, mm -hmm. which I never even really looked into. Yeah, I wouldn't have even paid any attention to it. But that's, you know, that's her mindset. You know, mm -hmm. every, I, I think every hiker out there probably has their own mindset. Now does, does hiking at not, what are the what are the the nuances and challenges of hiking at night versus during the day? Uh, outside of the obvious, it's dark and you, you can't see, so you have to have light. Yeah, that was a challenge for me. Well, for me, because this was my first time hiking. Um, well, I mean, I hiked Whitney at night, but this was the first time I actually like said, "Okay, yeah, let's do a, a night hike." Mm -hmm. um, you see, it's a it's a different light because you're by yourself. There's nobody on these trails for the most part, and um, you see the city in a different light and the only complication i would say is like hiking at night you can't see anything in front of you so your footing you need to make sure that you're watching your footing at at all times um because it's it's it it's harder to see where you're stepping on right and so um, but what about all those people eating creatures that you yeah. know, roam roam the trails at nighttime? That's you know everyone always says like yo you're not afraid of mountain lions or bears. I'm like no, I'm afraid of transients and pe you know just yeah. the people that are on there. I don't know who's up there. Yeah, you know there's a bunch of crazy people. I'm more afraid of people than I am of animals. Right, you know, they're just that's just the you know animals that that's their that's we're invading their 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 area that you just need to make sure that you're just going about your own business and they're yeah. harmless. Well, I think especially if you've got a headlight on the top yeah. of your head, you know, and if you're making noise, you know, yeah. they're going to be frightened of you. Um, but I will say this, which um, Jonah did teach me is mountain lions. They will stalk you throughout your whole trek and you wouldn't even know it. They want to mm -hmm. see if you're there by yourself. So it's always going to make noise as you're, mm -hmm. as you're moving along. Which, yeah, that did kind of frighten me a little bit, but... Yeah, mountain lions have been known to, you know, create some problems. Right. So. They do stalk their prey, yes. so... Um, but for the most part, like I said, it's the humans that I've... Yeah. The thing about mountain lions, too, though, there's usually only one in a 20-square-mile mm -hmm. area. They're very predatory. Mm -hmm. They, they you know, they stay to themselves. They right. don't allow others in there, you know, so, you know, you got... Got that. It's kind of like sharks, you know. I'm, you know, I'm always out in the middle of the ocean, so yeah, that you, you would know, freak so, me out because yeah. I'm afraid of sharks. Yeah, so people always talk about you know sharks and stuff, and it's you know, honestly, I've never seen one, you know. So really, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. And all the years surfing, and uh, and also all the years paddling, and, mm -hmm. and I'll be two or three miles out there by myself, and I won't see anything. You know what scares me when I'm out there though is if I get you know, when I'm going past the breakwater, or I'm, I'm out, you know, but even in, in the bay, mm -hmm. um, sea lions and seals. Really? Yeah, because they're so unpredictable and you don't realize how fucking big those things are, <laughs> you know, and, and all it takes is for them 
to swap you. <laughs> well, yeah, just to, you know, think they're being playful. You know, yeah. it's like dolphins. Dolphins right. are another one. Yeah. I love, I'll be out there and I'll see a pod of them coming around me and, you know, going up and under, but it freaks me out. Because they're unpredictable too. They're big, mm -hmm. you know, and they, and they can be playful, but not understand what playful is. Right. So, you know, they come and knock you off your, you know, your boat or yeah. do all kinds of things. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not worried about, about sharks, but... That seals and sea lions and you know they they're kind of freaky. Yeah, because one thing about me is I don't scare too easily. You know, I don't I don't get intimidated by the night. I don't get intimidated by the things around me. What intimidates me are, are um, like the Baldy Bowl, for instance. You know, I was invited to do the Baldy Bowl a couple weeks ago, and I um, the minute Enrico said, "Hey, let's do it," and I, I and I kind of agreed with them. And then I was thinking about it and I was like, no, I have doubt and I'm frightened. And anytime I feel like that, because I rarely get like that, yeah. I know it's not it's something not time. that I'm, no, it's not time. I yeah. need, I need experience. I need, um, I need the right gear, which I don't have. I don't have mm -hmm. all the right gear. Um, and I need to know and be trained on how to use the gear. You know, just because you have the gear doesn't mean that you are able to to utilize it. If you don't right. know, if you have the gear, how are you going to use it if you don't you don't train for it? Right. So before we get in that, because that's a, that's a that's another part of what mm -hmm. you do that I wanted to talk about is the gear and, mm -hmm. and and the training. Not not the so much the physical training, but the knowledge training. Mm -hmm. But for people that are listening, you know. What, we all know what rock climbing is. Mm -hmm. That's Alex climbing, you know, mm -hmm. a face without any support and just, you know, going. That's rock climbing. Right. Whole different sport entirely. Mm -hmm. But what's the difference between hiking and mountaineering? So, or, hiking, or even mountain climbing, which is mm -hmm. different than rock climbing, right? And mountaineering and in hiking. So, it's hiking in the snow really is what people see and they're like, Oh yeah, you know, I want to go hike in the snow because it's mm -hmm. pretty, it's beautiful. They want to go out there. They want to be in it. Um, the difference between hiking in the snow and mountaineering now it's technical. Now you're having to use different type of gear. You're having to use mountaineering boots, which are a lot heavier, um, and crampons. And you need to find the right boots to fit, you know, for these crampons to fit, and you need to learn how to use crampons. You There are techniques on how to climb with crampons, which I mm -hmm. am not familiar with. Yes, I do have them. Yes, I've walked. I've used them just to kind of practice with them on, on, on you know, smaller, um, not so mountaineering hikes. Um, mm -hmm. But there's a difference because now you're, for instance, on the Bali Bowl, that's considered a mountaineering hike hike because of the weather conditions because weather conditions change and now you're having to use an axe and you know you're having in order to use that axe to um let's just say you you fall off the mountain or you come sliding down you need to learn how to self-arrest yourself from stopping yourself from falling i don't have any of that training so mm -hmm. um to even speak about it i'm I, I don't know my knowledge is very limited now Am I going to um, look into training in that? Absolutely. I need I need experience in that. And th that is either with training with a friend that has experience, which I'm, I'm going to be training with a friend soon. Um, I've reached out to him. He's been a mountaineer for quite a long time. Um, so he's going to actually show me how to, how to do self-arrest and um, how to use my crampons, uh, how to fall, fall in the snow. But I still do want to take classes. You know, you always need to, to train make, yourself make in doing better. that. Yeah. That yeah. and once I do all of that, I, I will feel a lot more confident and comfortable to saying, okay, I'll join you on the bowl. Right. But to to say, oh, I'm gonna join you on this bowl with no experience with an axe and or no experience using crampons, not the right gear, that's just that's just dumb for me. Bring up some crampons. I wanna see in so, so the, the points too. So for Baldy, I, mm -hmm. I believe you have to have at least 10 to 12 points. So meaning the grip, um, okay. you should be wearing and, um, 
yeah, if you go to San Gregorio Rescue or San, San Fernando Valley Rescue, they will post this sign, and a lot of people ignore this sign. Um, I think it's on Instagram, too. San, San, let me see on my phone. But I think it's important to share, um, you know, their information because a lot of people go up there with no training mm -hmm. um, whatsoever. And they avoid. So if you go to West Valley Search and Rescue on Instagram. And there's a warning sign. And they'll, it lists. Oh, is that the warning sign right there? Yeah, the one in yellow. Uh, the other, the other one, I'm sorry. Yeah. So if you look at the list, mm -hmm. you know, and they that's as that that sign is right as you enter that, Baldy. That's post. That's, that's posted. posted. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people ignore it. Really? I mean, it, if you see there, it says crampons and axe and helmet. And that's why you see all of these rescues. Don't travel alone. Extra right. food. So they're what they're saying is what you were talking about right. is actually being prepared for. The worst case. Right. Because now you're, do, now it's mountaineering. Yes. Especially if you're going to do the bowl, you know? Yeah. 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 So. What's, what's the, find, see if you can find the ice axe. I want to see what the ice axe looks like. I think I have an idea. It's pointed on one end and. And see, there's a technique for that. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. To be I, quite honest, I don't know anything. So that's the reason why I decided not to do it because I don't want to put people in charge of me. I don't want to be rescued, you know, for a stupid decision that I made. Just mm -hmm. so yeah, the, they're all different technical and I, I honestly can't explain, but just the of basic, reasons why. Yeah. The, the basic one is just a standard, um, one that you see at the top. Yeah. Yeah. So do you ever see yourself doing something like that? Doing no, ice no, climbing? No, 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 no. You know, I'm afraid of heights, and so if I even accomplish the Baldy Bowl, that mm -hmm. to me um, will be like the epitome of that's as far as I go. Right. You know, I don't yeah. need to go any further. I don't need to prove myself. So that's why I decided. You not need to, to doc do it. when you do that, though. I need to document the training to, and. Yeah, yeah. You need you actually need not need to, but it would be very cool mm -hmm. for people like me that follow you mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm I'm just intrigued by what you do. Mm -hmm. To see the process, of, right? You know, of what the training is, the classes that you go to, mm -hmm. you know, what what it is to, to practice with a with a. a an ice axe or to have the, you know, the, what are the, right the gear. Cam camp on camp, the crampons, crampons. Yeah. you know, it, it would be really interesting to watch you mm -hmm. go through the process and then end up at the bowl. Right. Yeah. I know. I ever, sometimes when I think about it, I still, I, I do envision myself on there, but I envision myself scared. <laughs> so yeah. scared, like yeah, scared as like, I don't want to say it, but scared as fuck. Cause I already know, yeah. I already know that I'm terrified of heights. And, um, if I'm not prepared for the worst that can happen, what there's no, there's no, there's no reason for me to be up there. Right. You know, that's just, now you're just being, well, you're endangering yeah, others. others. Exactly. Yeah. I don't want to, I, I mean, even if they're, even if they're skilled mm -hmm. and they're trained in rescue, yeah. they're still taking a, a risk, risk yeah. that they didn't need to take because you were unprepared. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's no reason for me to be at the bowl right now. So <laughs> until yeah. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. fully prepared, I'm ready to do it and confident myself, then I'll do it. Yeah. But well, where do you go? Where, you know, where there, like classes, where do you, where there are do you different take classes? Class? I don't, I haven't really researched into what classes I do have a friend, um, who's going to teach me, um, some skill sets that he's, cause he's been a mountaineer for quite a bit, for quite a long time. So he's just going to kind of give me like a taste of it, if you will, and kind of learn, teach me how to self arrest and, and use the ax and use how to, you know how to how to um, walk in the crampons because it's all technical. So, um, is this one of those things where you find somebody like that 
or, or the or the friend that you went with today, mm -hmm. um, Jonah. Yeah, Jonah. Um, find people like that that have the experience, and they can teach you a little bit here, a little bit there. But it, is it more of a trial and error? More yeah, that you got to be out there with them, right? You always want to make sure. And she was telling me today, um, mountaineering. You always want to have four people in a group when you're doing the bowl because. In case something happens, you have one person with the person that's down and then the other two mm -hmm. looking for help. So you right. don't always want to have that, the pair. Yeah. And just, you never want to hike um, or do a mountaineer hike by yourself. You need, you should have somebody else with you. Oh, that would just seem common sense. Yeah, but. I mean, that common sense and, and the fact too, it's it's not as much fun when you're by yourself. Yeah, but the thing is, there are a lot of people, and this is why we have a lot of rescues, is because a lot of them go by themselves, and um, and I hate to tell you this, but some of it's just for the gram. They want to, you know, or they or they have no knowledge, and they're seeing people go up, yes. so they're thinking like, oh, this is the trail. Oh. You know, they're not, yeah. They're, yeah. they don't know, because they're is, by themselves. This is the trail up to the Hollywood side. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Gonna, yeah, yeah. So I've seen that happen, and I've come across people that, you know, our lot, we've come across like lost hikers and that's because they're like, Oh, we want to catch, catch the sunrise had no, um, no, not, not even the right gear. No, no micro spikes, no poles and just regular tennis shoes. And you know, these are the ones, those are the people that are getting rescued. Right. You know? Yeah. And so, avoiding the signs. Not right. Avoiding the signs. And it's, you know, it's for the grammar because they see other people. You they know. don't realize how, vast and open oh my god it is once once you leave the parking lot and you're by yourself a hundred a hundred yards in yeah you can get turned around so yep. easily especially in the snow especially yeah. in the snow because the trails blanket it yeah you can't even see the snow unless you have full knowledge or comfortable with that mountain that you're hiking you can get lost real quickly and if you don't have the right gps or if you don't have the right map or a compass or any or any knowledge of what's, you know, north, south, east and west, I can't tell you how many people go up there not knowing their sense of direction. Yeah. Or even looking at something and saying, oh, OK, yeah, I know, you know, I remember this tree or they don't they don't look at these things. Yeah. Yeah. And and even having a compass isn't always going to help you. Out right. Because, you know, the the trail doesn't run just north and south right i mean it winds around mm -hmm. and so you know for you to be in there with the gps is just one of the greatest tools mm -hmm. you know to yeah to have because that'll pinpoint you but still it doesn't help especially in the snow it would seem to me the snow not only covers the trails mm -hmm. but it's also covers your footing and you don't know what's under there. yeah you, you don't, don't know what's under there that's know. what's scary especially yeah. in the snow that's why i'm like I, you know, I, I, I kind of want to do a few more. If I can't do Baldy Bowl this year, then I can't do it. You know, I'll I'll wait until next year. So you, um, got, you got a lot of years. I got a lot of years. That, lot bowl, of years. that bowl's not going to go anywhere. It's been here a couple of years. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to rush into it. You know, if I don't feel confident, I'm not going to do yeah. it. That's just the way I am. Yeah. Um, But yeah. there are other things, and I'm actually kind of getting sick of the snow. <laughs> I want it to be spring now. I yeah. just want to do, Yeah. you know. Yeah, I like, I like the... The, the winter for a few weeks mm -hmm. and then uh once i've had enough winter it's like okay i want the warmth again mm -hmm. but then a lot of times too now you're hiking in extreme heat right and now you got hydration problems right and issues and you know you had to wake up sun. earlier and earlier you want yeah to yeah then all of a sudden you oh, i can hardly wait for winter. yeah you know? exactly never satisfied never never <laughs> californians never, never. yeah never happy <laughs> never happy but it's a uh, you know, so so that's your next bucket list is the bowl, the baldy bowl. bowl. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to try to accomplish. If not this year, then there's always next year. Is, it, is that something that you can also do during the summer, but there's just no snow to kind of get a feel? You know, it actually or? sticks on there for quite a long time. But I can also, um, you know, do other, you know, do the Sierras because they that they Sierras kind of hold on to the snow for quite a bit. So. Yeah. Maybe that's something that I might venture out to. But, of course, I want to go with people that are more experienced than I am and kind of follow their direction. Right. Um, but I want to feel confident in the equipment that I used before I even do all of that. Yeah. So yeah. So you're starting to collect. Yeah. Slowly and slowly putting my bag 
together with with this mountaineering you know gear and mm-hmm. getting all my gear ready where, where do you get it do you get most of it online or are you online uh, rei usually mm-hmm. um because they're real good at um returning things mm-hmm. um so that's just a fun place to go to. yeah and it's a fun place to go to <laughs> like, <laughs> like if anybody wants I'm, to get give me gift cards they all have to just you know rei it's super easy you just yeah. go to rei and get me a gift card yeah i'm not i'm not really even a mountain guy or or you know a hiker or whatever and i love yeah. it's just like it's, some girls like louis vuitton's like this one <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. that sounds like yeah it's like every time she's like showing me her boots that she orders i'm like i'm like okay well that's nice i want these boots they're like so yeah opposite yeah yeah <laughs> are like uh two thousand yeah two thousand yeah, dollars yeah. i know it's like you're looking at them going you know what I could get an yeah, REI you know what with I this? Could get? Yeah, you know how much <laughs> equipment I could get for two thousand dollars shoes. <laughs> I know. Yeah. L- luckily, I don't have that with Jill, but the Louis Vuitton. Yeah, yeah. you know she's a, she's a definite Louis Vuitton girl. Well, well worth it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what everybody says. That's got them. They didn't, you know. Yeah. I look at it and I go, that just cost me a lot of fucking money. <laughs> But she's worth it. She's worth it. You yeah, ab- absolutely. She puts up with me. You know, <laughs> she's not into the boots though. But her running shoes are three hundred bucks. Oh wow! Yes. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. yeah. She. She. Uh, what type do you? Um. I guess it depends on the the comfort. Uh huh. Arch. Uh, yeah. Adidas so far. Yeah. She's been. She's been for years. Uh. Hookah. Mm. Hmm. The hookah brand is, and, and actually, I I actually even have a pair, and I don't even run, but they're so fucking comfortable. Yeah, I, I mean, heard they about are, that. They yeah, are, I heard those are really good for are, running. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're cushy. I wear them to the gym. Yeah, just so when I'm standing, so waiting many for many of them. Yeah, where yeah, so many people wear those. Yeah, even on hikes too. I see them. Do you really? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd wear them on a hike because they're so soft and and, and spongy. There's really no lateral support. Well, they do have hiking. Oh, they do. They do have hiking. Oh, shoes. yeah. Okay. So. I didn't know that. I just thought that they were just, you know, a comfort shoe to wear at the gym while I'm standing waiting <laughs> yeah. for somebody to finish with their bench press, <laughs> you know, while they're sitting on Instagram. <laughs> uh, I don't even want to go down that path. Freaking gym. Oh, man. I've been going to the gym for, I figured it out, for over 50 years. As I think I started, I think I started when I was like 18, 19 years old. So that's over 50 years going to the gym. Wow. And I miss, I miss my old school gyms. The ones that were in a back corner of a little parking lot. No one's little Instagramming. Strip malls. Nobody's Instagramming. Nobody Nobody's has headphones. Anything. No, there wasn't, there wasn't anything. The music was blaring. Right. And, and you didn't really wait on too much. Nobody was screwing around. Everybody was there for a reason. Mm-hmm. And then you went in, you got out. And that was it. Yeah. You know, there was nobody, you know, I mean, you had some bodybuilders posing in front of a, a mirror or something, but. But there, nothing there with were. phones or anything like that or a no. tripod or a. No, there was no. <laughs> selfie light. No, there was no, there was, yeah, there was, there, there, there was no fashion that you had to wear or. I mean, I feel, I mean, I am old. I mean, I'll be 70 this year. Yeah, but and you're only as old as you feel. Okay, I'm 80. Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> like, I do not, I, I do, I refuse to look my age. I refuse to, you know, um, fall into that, you know, dogma of like, yeah. you know, I'm already this old, this, this old. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to stop. Yeah. No, I work out at least three to four times a week talked about that you know and i still i've still i'm still doing it and i see you know i don't have trainers like kim kardashian or like jennifer lopez and you know they're within my same age group but they have trainers they have cooks you know they have all of these people working to help them get to where they're at um but you know some people just don't have that drive or they just you know i i would i would hate to have a trainer yeah. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let anybody tell me how, how to, <laughs> I'm supposed to do something or how many I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been doing it for so long. I've actually just got kind of a feel for, you know, if I want to do 12 reps, I'll do 12 mm-hmm. reps. Mm-hmm. If I want to stop at eight, I'm going to stop at eight. 
I just yeah. listen to myself listen at to this your body. point. Yeah. Yep. And that's what I do too. It's like, if I don't feel like I'm in it today, I'll just go home, do a salt yeah. bath and relax or whatever. But yeah, I don't like to overstress my body, you know? Um, but at the same time, I hate when people say, oh, you know, you're, you know, it's just th- your body frame. That's why you're thin. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Jeez, really? No. It's not my metabolism. I come from a line, full line of family obesity and issues. And um, I know if I were to let myself go, I would fall in, in the yeah. direction because it's, it's hereditary. Yeah. You know, so. Well, it's, it's, it's the way of our society right. today. You know, it, it's not hard to put on weight. It's not mm-hmm. hard to be overweight. It's not hard to eat like shit mm-hmm. because it's, it surrounds us and it's become more and more acceptable mm-hmm. to be overweight. Nobody thinks twice about it, Mm-mm. you know? And, and I mean, I'm not, you know, getting on anybody that's, you know, overweight and, you know, that's their choice. That's where they're at. And, you know, they're I mean, in today's world, that's more the norm. Nice people. People yeah. I love to be around, people I love to talk to, and but I would love to see them get healthy. I would love right. to see them get more fit, and I, you know, but it's just not on the cards for everybody. No, and you said it too. You, you know, it's their choice. Everyone has that choice. You wake up in the morning and you tell yourself, "Sure, today I'm going to change," or "This is what I'm going to do." And it's, and it's routine, and nobody likes to do with routine or consistency, and that's why they fall off every yeah. year. They start off real strong at the beginning of the year and then they fall off because they are not consistent well it's it's not easy no you know and and that's for years i mean people would always ask me you know why are you why are you working out why are you watching what you eat why are you doing this and my my reply was always i don't want to be 50 years old mm-hmm. and out of shape and right. not be able to get back in shape yeah because at that age if you're out of shape the chances of you of regaining that mm-hmm. that shape that you could have had at that 30 or even 40 is i don't want to say impossible it's it's done you know guys should do it but oh my god that that path mm-hmm. is so hard so hard well she gets up what time do you get up she gets four up in the morning four in the morning four. And she, what's your routine in the morning? So I wake up at four in the morning. I give myself 30 minutes to drink my coffee, wash my face, slap myself around. Mm -hmm. Um, Thankfully, the gym's right across the street. I'm in there by 4.30, get out by 5.30, go home, get ready. Um, Sometimes I'll cook my food in the morning or at night, take my son to school, and I'm in the office by 8 o'clock. So that's a routine, but that's starting yeah. at four in the four morning. Four in the morning. Well, Denise yeah. was doing it. She was doing it at four in the morning. Mm-hmm. Now she's doing it in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. So I have a friend um, that told me, just don't think about it. Just get up and do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely mind training. You, ha- you have to train the mind. I was right. just having this conversation with Brian yesterday. You know, the, there's the saying that I love and I've lived by, and it's, you know, your mind is either going to control you or you can control exactly. your mind. Yep. And, yep. and it's so true. But it happens. You can't, yeah. sometimes you can't control your mind. No, yeah. no, but you, but what you're saying is what I agree in. You can't control it. Your mind is going to think it. Oh, yeah. Your mind is going to want to. You can't to, escape it sometimes. Yeah, your, your mind is going to want to take the easy route out. But right. you've got to f- force yourself. Don't think about it. To go it. through yeah. and go, yeah, you're right, mind. I'd rather stay in bed. It's nice and cozy and it's cold Especially outside right and it's now raining. that it's raining yeah. and it's cold. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, then once you're there, you know, it's game on. And then you walk out. How do you feel when you walk Amazing. out? At, oh, my and the God. Weird part it is, changes your whole mood through the whole day. The whole day. She got yeah. me into getting up in the morning because mm-hmm. I was doing it here and there if i don't do it in the morning right my day's just thrown off yeah and if yeah. i do it in the afternoon i don't get the workout that i do in the morning yeah it's yeah. different I mean, it's it's different it and it's and it's what i think you either get accustomed to or what your biological clock allows you to do also but you get your body accustomed to that yes and mm-hmm. that and that becomes your your new clock i i used to or early on in in working out i oh i knew the owner 
of uh, the gym that I worked out in. Mm -hmm. And so I talked him into giving me the key because me and four or five other guys wanted to work out at five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so he did it. He gave me the key. Then I became responsible mm -hmm. because the other guys knew that I had the key. So I had to open to make sure. So they did, I didn't want them to show up and right. it's locked. And then I'm going to, you know, <laughs> and that was before cell phones and, you know, all that would do and just, you know, piss them off that I'd hear about the next day. So um, I worked out in the mornings for about two years, maybe a little bit more, but it was always a struggle. I, mm -hmm. I, I never enjoyed it. And it was mainly because for me, my body didn't do well mm -hmm. first thing in so the morning. So you did better in the afternoon. Two o'clock. Two o'clock is my prime time. Do I get two o'clock most time? No. A lot of times it's <laughs> four thirty, five o'clock or, or, but you or do whatever. What you do to but, make it happen. Yeah. But I'm more the afternoon and I would rather work my schedule to do mm -hmm. it in the afternoon than I would in the morning because my workouts are, were better at that are time. better at that time. Yeah. So yeah. when when I try to associate like, oh, my friend Denise, she's the only one that wakes up this early and I can text and is okay with the same thing that I do, people can't wrap their head around, like you said, your age yeah. and why. Why do they because I want to live to see my grandchildren for as long as I can. Yeah. Um, but people can't wrap their heads around. Yeah. Well, they don't. They don't connect the dots between fitness today mm -hmm. and longevity later. Yeah. You know, they they don't. We all we all think something is going to last forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 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 it and it doesn't. Things are taken from us quickly. We've had that mm -hmm. conversation, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and it happens, and we don't. So for anybody to say it doesn't matter or I'm going, you know, they're thinking that they're going to end up with the same thing that you are. Absolutely and, not. And, and it doesn't happen that way. Same thing with eating. Mm -hmm. um, I had a coworker. They make fun of me because of the way I eat. Mm -hmm. Like you say, a bro diet. Yeah. <laughs> a bro um, diet. They, one of my coworkers tells a me. A what diet? A bro, bro diet. diet. I call it the bro diet. Oh. You know, like. Just basically your protein, your veggies. Oh. Yeah. And it's. All day. Uh, yeah. A coworker told me you don't, you don't eat to live. You live. No, you don't live to eat. You eat to live. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And I never yeah. heard that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It's uh, my my love affair with food <laughs> uh, is very sporadic because I know what I'm supposed to eat. Right. And then. I also know what I like to eat. Yep. I majority of the time eat what I know I'm supposed to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I shift off of it, I mean, it's heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it is well, heaven. Yeah, I mean, we all but, splurge sometimes too, you know. But it's so dangerous for it me. Is. One thing I, 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 I quit white sugar for the longest yeah. time, and makes me feel so much better. The, the the more I limit white sugar and sweets and, you know, and it's not candy and those types of things. It's it's mostly, it's cookies. I mean, oh, yeah. I, <laughs> cookies are just like my Achille, Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. But um, I eat now a really heavy carnivore diet and I find it works much better for me. So yeah. I, I can really survive on, on meat, meat, even chicken, fish, whatever, but mostly meat. And fruit, mm -hmm. and I feel great. If I go, I do the same thing too. Yeah, if I go off of that, it's surprising because I can be off sugar for a month and mm -hmm. just not touch it. And then, you know, I'm going to have a cheat day. And so I'll have a cheat day and I'll eat a bunch of crap. Right. But you and continue you with your meat. <laughs> the next day, when I go back onto my typical diet, yeah. It's a, it's an addiction it because is. all of a sudden the craving, craving for yes. more is unsatiable. That I mean, night, you really... so that's normally on Sundays, yeah. and I did that a lot. Yeah. So here comes Monday, and I'm just craving the sugar, and yeah. it's like um, yeah. it's like I feel like a crack addict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly right, exactly. I we, need the sugar. We yeah. did. We we had a we had a, a podcast with really a sweet soul, a really really good guy, Daniel, and Daniel shared his story about being an addict and mm -hmm. being homeless, and and his addiction 
started early. He started drinking at 11. And and by the time he was 15 years old, he recognized that he was already an addict. And then he went through the whole thing of... Uh, oh. Oh. Somebody's missing me. Is there a winter word? <laughs> I turned mine off a long time ago. <laughs> I know. I should have. I didn't think about it. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, you know, so, but, but he talked about his addiction and uh-huh. addiction to drugs. And I, you don't want to say it because it's, I, I don't want to oversimplify, you know, his path and mm-hmm. the addiction, addiction he went through. But it was so similar to how I feel coming off of sugar or craving sugar, yeah. just the cravings and how you can really talk yourself into something mm-hmm. you know oh, i'm just gonna have a donut you well I don't, that's all i want just one donut <laughs> i think know, i like, think the like that high from the sugar it goes like sugar coffee and i think next is drugs yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i'm glad i just never have done drugs <laughs> yeah. who knows then if i would have liked that because coffee is my addiction i mean yeah. it's uh i, I drink so much coffee it's it's stupid you know? <laughs> but but you know it, it gets me going but uh yeah diet is uh one of the things that people really don't i mean appearance for me the reason why i work out too a lot is appearance to me is everything you know especially if i want to yeah. get somewhere with my career mm-hmm. i'm going to be competing with 20 year olds and 30 year olds i still sure. need to look like i am capable you know, because they're going to want to bring in the youngins, no doubt, you yeah. know. So I want to kind of at least fit in still right. or, like, be questioned about my age. So I still need to look the part. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's, you know, I've always I've always maintained my appearance because, you know, you want right. to compete with all these. You want to be remembered. I would like to say that I don't give appearance a lot of thought. I give it a lot less. Mm-hmm at my age today Mm -hmm. than I ever used to. But there was a time when it was a lot of why, because going back to what I was saying, I don't want to be 50 years old Mm -hmm. and be out of shape or look out of shape or whatever and not be able to get it back. But, um, it, 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 it does get to a point, at least where I'm at today. It has a, it has little to do. And I want to say it doesn't have anything, but little to do with appearance and more to do with, with, I don't want to be a prisoner in a body that I can't do anything with. Right. You know, I mean, I'm in a sport that I'm, I'm in a boat with a lot of people that are 20 years or more younger. Yeah. You need to make sure that you're pulling weight as much as they are and or more them, or yeah depend it's, on it's you it's got to got to be more yeah. you know yeah. so i put out the extra effort i put out the energy i put out you know because it's a a, a passion a mm-hmm. passion of sport but also a passion of my integrity of of what i'm doing and how i'm doing it and and i'm not long for the free ride and i don't want to you know, just sit there and have them row you. Well, I, yeah, I don't want to be. Yeah, I don't want to be the old guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I am the old guy, but I don't want to be. Yeah, l- you don't the want them guy. thinking, oh, no, we have to carry him. Yeah, yeah, no, I want them to be thinking, fucker won't slow down. I can't keep up. That's what I want. Yeah, you know? I, I, I hear what you're saying. That's how I would like to feel too. You know, I don't want if I'm hiking with these twenty year olds. I want to make sure that. You know, they're looking at it's like, oh, damn, I got to keep up with her. Or yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly right. And, yeah. And, you know, and, and my, I have, and the other part of me too is I want to be kind of a role model, not for the young people. Mm-hmm. Fuck the young people. They <laughs> figure their own, figure their own path out. You know, I mean, yeah. I had to. I you know. know. I want to like, be a role model for the older people. I want to. I want people to look at me and say, "Okay, that's doable." Right. I want people to look at me and say, "You know what? I don't if have he's to." He's doing it. it. Like we. I can do yeah, it. I yeah, can do it. I can get out. And what I tell people too is, "Okay, you know what? You may not. You know, if you haven't ran in twenty years, you may not run that marathon. Yeah. But you know what? You can sure as hell get out there and walk try. a ten k. At least try. Yeah, get out and walk a ten k. Right. See where that walking that ten k leads you to. Exactly. You know, it, you know, you're gonna lose ten pounds. If you can lose ten pounds, guess what? You can lose fifty. 
you know, yeah. get started, do something, get off the couch, re-engage in life mm -hmm. at any age. That's what I believe. And in and, and some of it, too, I blame on society and I blame on our younger kids, too. Mm -hmm. You know, the children of these people who are going to the parents and constantly telling them, you're old as fuck. <laughs> you know, constantly telling them you don't understand. Right. You know, let you know, you don't understand technology. You don't understand what we're thinking. You don't understand today. You don't under you know, well, instead of telling them they don't understand, maybe take the time to explain it to them. Right. Yeah. You know, Brian gives me a lot of shit, but I gotta <laughs> tell you, he explains things to yeah. me. It's well deserved though. Yeah. <laughs> True statement. <laughs> But you know, but it, also it, too, you don't take that and you go with it. You take that as, you know what? I'm going to prove to you, like, yeah, you know, there's some people that take this criticism and they take it to heart and they think, okay, yeah, I'm not going to do, you know, yeah, like I'm not going to be able to do it. Like some people will say, oh, you can't hike that, or why are you doing that, or or putting even a little bit of doubt, yeah. in me. Yeah. When are you going to slow down? Yeah. That drives, I don't know, but a lot of people that tell me this, it just drives me more, more motivation because yeah. I don't like the word no. I don't like telling me that I can't do something. That just gives me more drive to, to do right. it because I want to, I want to be like, you know what? I'm, I'm showing you that I can, I can do you it. You can do it. Well, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's there's got to be things that are going to push you through your whole life. Yeah. You got to have it. You got to have that, 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 that challenge, that inspiration has to come mm -hmm. from some mm -hmm. someplace. And so if that means that somebody else being negative mm -hmm. is going to be that spark mm -hmm. that makes you go climb your next adventure, then so be it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's fine. Right. You know, I don't, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, to me, it's it, life's way too short. You know, it is, you can't, yeah. you, you, when, when do you really, when do you want to say is a, is a good time to say no? When is a good time to say, okay, I'm not going to do anymore. Mm -hmm. When's a good time to say, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm not going to the gym anymore. You know, that may <laughs> I mean, don't think I can ever say that. No, to <laughs> no, exactly. Like, exactly. And it's, it's like, it's like me at 70. Uh -huh. How many Fucking 70 year olds got a <laughs> podcast. I mean, I know that's why you're like my inspiration. I want, you know, and I want to talk more. I want to bring my Instagram a little bit more livelier. I don't say much on my Instagram. And I mm -hmm. think I want to share more this year, but, yeah. um, you know, time and place for anything. Yeah. And when in, like this, this, this is motivation, you know? Yeah. Like, it, it, this at is, any age. At any age. But I mean, it's, it's, it's putting yourself in a position to be vulnerable. Right. Yeah. If you make yourself vulnerable, now there's that drive mm -hmm. to prove yourself, mm -hmm. you know, to make it. So that, that's one of the things that Brian and I, you know, two different ends of the spectrum in age, mm -hmm. but both of us had the same goal. We just want to see, you know, how far this can go. What right. can we do? We have no vision of monetizing it. You and know, sometimes you be, don't need that. It just goes with the it's flow. It's just we want it. It's our challenge. Right. It's and plus it's fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is I enjoyed this. This is, you know, an opportunity for he, me, mm -hmm. you know, get to know. I mean, we've had an opportunity to talk to a lot of different people mm -hmm. and you know, just hearing other people talk and, and sharing and you know, it's it's amazing. Everyone but has a story. Everybody everyone does. Everyone has a story, yeah. It, it's just pulling it out right you know right it's, it's making them comfortable it's you know it's it's good times for sure Jim. you know but anyway good time tonight it was a good talk mike it was a great time man <laughs> we just next kept, time we just kept it going well, yeah we did yeah and get on your instagram I you know will. make I it will. make it because it is it is really good and you do have a lot of adventures and in mm -hmm. pictures that you share but you know, I think you need to take that along with your your hiking to the next level. I think mm -hmm. you need to take your Instagram to the next level, too, and start sharing with people how they can get there. You know, because you are, whether you want to see it or not mm -hmm. see it, an inspiration to a lot of people that may want to follow in the footsteps mm -hmm. but don't know how. That's true. You know, and, you know, get them out there and get them out there doing it safely. Exactly. Yeah, that's the key point right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All, All right. right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night.